Okay, my goal in this problem is to, um, or in this video, is to give you an example of how do I work with prisms. This is not entirely new to you, but maybe you haven't done all of the things that I'm about to explain to you. Um, we might be doing a little bit of different vocabulary than what you've seen in the past. So we're working with um, prisms, and this one appears to be a triangular prism. So remember, we named the prism by its bases. So right off the bat, I'm recognizing that the base is not actually most common mistake. We call the base whatever it's sitting on. So that rectangle is not the base. The bases are the triangles. And let's go ahead and just highlight those. I'll use green to highlight my two bases. So that means I have three other sides, and we call those the lateral faces. And just take a look at the shape. So this would be one, kind of the side there, and then we've got the one that it's sitting on, and then we've got kind of this back wall. And those are all rectangles. So lateral faces is the word that we use to describe the faces that are not bases. Um, and there's not really necessarily a formula for that. I'm going to go with uh, lateral areas, total surface area. We're just adding up the areas of the surfaces. So we're totally applying what we know about area. Um, and in this case, they aren't too bad. So let's go ahead and write down what we're getting for lateral area is what it, I'm calling that again. So the three rectangles, um, we've got 6 times 12 is the one it's sitting on, plus 8 times 12, plus, um, uh-oh, I don't know this length, it appears, um, this side in my right triangle, but it's something times 12. So now I'm asking myself, how can I actually find that unknown length there, and maybe remembering something about right triangles. Yeah, we've used it a few times before. Uh, happens to be Pythagorean theorem, six squared plus eight squared equals none other than c squared, and that gives me c equals 10. So I'm putting in a 10 there, and then I'm gonna add those up. So my answer for lateral area is gonna be 72 plus 96 plus 120, add all those up and I'm getting 288 square feet. And really this is just a way of breaking up my area, so I make sure I kind of get everything in sort of an organized manner. Um, before we move on, I'm just going to point out that if we look at that very first line, there's actually another way that we could write this, and it might give you a method that's a little easier for finding the lateral area. I'm noticing that in every single one of these, I multiplied by 12. 12 is the height of the prism, we could call it, the distance between the two bases. So yeah, every rectangle has a height of 12. They just have different bases. So we could actually factor out that 12 and say that we multiplied 12 times the sum of 6 plus 8 plus 10, which in actuality was actually the perimeter of my base. So taking the height of the prism times the perimeter of the base would give us the lateral area. Just an option. Um, now we want to find what's called the base area. So we could use capital B for that. I usually put BA just to be uh, consistent with what we did for lateral area. And yeah, we already pointed out that the, the base is just this triangle here. So area of a triangle formula, one half base times height. So nothing new here. Old news, one half times base is six and height is eight. We should be getting used to sort of seeing those um, right triangles and using the legs as my um, base and height. That gives me, what, three times eight, which is 24 feet squared. So then I'm gonna find my total area. So total area, I usually just put SA. This would be if the teacher had just asked you to find surface area, then we'd be doing the lateral area plus two times the base area because I have two bases. So that's a matter of taking my lateral area, which I had over here, 288, plus two times my base area, it was right here. And if I do that, and I do my math correctly, it's 48 plus 288 is 336. Feet squared for my total surface area. And there's one other thing you should be able to do, and this is actually usually the easiest um, volume because you do have formulas for these. So I'm going to refer you back to your error formula sheet that you had, and or you could Google the formula. Um, we want to be as specific as 
possible. So we, instead of memorizing a different formula for every prism, we just say, hey, let's take the area of that base and multiply it by the height. So remember that B is really BA. That's the same BA that I had over here that I'm going to plug in. So I'm going to use that 24 again. And then I've got times the height, and the height of the prism was that 12 distance between the two bases. So that gives me a volume of 288 cubic units because I'm talking volume. And you're probably noticing right now that we have 288 here and we have 288 here. And I'm going to go ahead and say that's a coincidence, but if you don't believe me, you're welcome to explore that on your own. But there's, not, there's no reason that our lateral area is necessarily going to be the same as our volume. It just happened to be the way in this problem. So you should be getting an idea of a prism. Um, feel free to go ahead and try the next one on your own and or you can follow me through the whole thing. So here's the next one. Uh, we should try to name this and figure out what kind of prism we're talking about. So we are talking about, hopefully you're thinking, pentagonal prism um, because the bases are pentagons. I'm observing something about those pentagons based on the markings. They appear to be a, actually, I guess they're just technically marked as equilateral, but let's go ahead and say that they should be regular pentagons. So perhaps I should have marked the angles congruent or told you that it was a regular prism, um, but those are the ones that we're going to deal with at this point. So um, let's follow through what we did last time and see what works here. So we've got lateral area. So picturing the base, the faces that are not bases. So we've got this front face which is eight times five. Picture's not to scale here. I've got a side of eight, height of five. I've got a side of eight again and a height of five on the side. Eight for the base and height of five. And you could picture two along the back there. So it looks like I've got five rectangular faces that are all eight by five. So I'm gonna find the area of one of those, which is 40. Multiply that by five. And that gives me 200 square inches for my lateral area. Again, that's just the rectangles. Um, so now to get my total surface area, that's going to be the lateral area plus two times the base area. So I guess now I need to find the base area. So let's tackle these pentagons that we see here and hey, they're regular pentagons. So you guys are getting good at regular polygons. So now we're just gonna go back and do a regular polygon problem kind of on the side so I can get this base area measurement. Um, so I'm gonna draw the triangle in there. Maybe you wanna redraw the pentagon so it's a little easier to see. And you can picture that triangle. Um, area of pentagon, you can use one half apothem times perimeter if you want. I'm going to do the one half base times height, area of that triangle times five, since I have five triangles. So your choice of methods, I don't care which one you use, whichever one you've decided you like best. Um, what do we know right now about that pentagon? Well, it looks like we know the base of the triangle. I'm sorry, because I'm trying to find the area of the triangle. The base of the triangle is eight. That's the side of the pentagon. So that's going to be eight. And it seems that I need to find the height, and then I can multiply area of the triangle times five. So to get the height, I need to roll that in, and then I'm gonna pull out one of those triangles. So just because I need a little more room here, I'm gonna work down here. And recall that we know the angle in here, the entire angle of my green triangle that I started with is 360 divided by five, that's 72 degrees. So this ends up being a 36 degrees. 36 degree angle, maybe you remember that from previous pentagons that you did, but good review because we need to be able to handle any regular polygon. You could find the other angle, the one down here. Um, I'm not worried about that right now because as long as I know one angle, I should be able to use either special right triangles or trig to solve for a missing side. I know this length is four because the whole thing was eight and I'm cutting that in half. So I've got four there and I'm trying to solve for the height. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here. It's not a special right triangle because it's got a 36 degree angle. So I've got tan 36 equals four over X to solve for X. I should be doing four divided by tan 36. So four divided by tan 36 is giving me 5.50. Um, 
let's go five zero six and if you want to store these values in your calculator just kind of keep using them that's cool I'm just writing down something so I can show you the numbers I'm getting along the way okay but I did get, want to get one answer for that so like I said I'm just keeping that in my calculator multiplying that times eight dividing that by two and then multiplying that times five so I got 22.022 multiply that times five and my answer for area of the Pentagon was 110.110 um, 110.11 let's go to decimal places there so that's my base area and then I'm taking that over to here so 110.11 multiplying that by 2 and then adding the 200 to that that is my lateral area from above So two times my answer that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the stored value. It gives me 220.22 plus 200. There's no point in keeping this in exact form because I use trig, so it's going to be a decimal approximation. 420.22 if I'm rounding to the hundreds place. I don't think I gave you specific rounding instructions, so let's do that. And then I've got one more thing. So I've got lateral area. I've got total surface area, and like I said, volume really is the easiest. Capital B times H, and we talked about that capital B is really my base area, if you will. And the base area we got was 110.11. I'm going to multiply that by the height. Remember, it's the distance between the two bases, and that is my 5. It actually looks like the height in this picture, right? Because it's not laying on its side like the last one was. And that's going to give me an answer of 550.55 cubic units because it's volume. So hopefully that helps you to get a general idea. Um, I would say that from this point you should be able to generalize that and be able to do basically any kind of regular prism that I give you. So um, watch the next video and we'll go through pyramids.